So what I was saying is that now that as Dr. Durga was telling you, you have probably all dressed your papers uh, as Mona Lisa and uh, you have published in the right journal as uh, Dr. Latika gave you tips on. But the journal publication scenario has become so confusing that you really want to know which is the real Mona Lisa. Everyone comes dressed in the same clothes, more or less. So for that, we use citation metrics. And let's take you a little bit more into the world of citation metrics in the next 10 to 15 minutes. I will talk basically in this very short presentation on why we need to use citation metrics, who are the different service providers, and what do citation metrics really mean? So why do we need citation metrics? So like I said, everybody comes dressed as a Mona Lisa. The journal publications or the Pub uh, PubMed indexed publications have gone up in the last few decades in disproportionate levels. And these days you find so much information which bombards you and keeps coming your way that it really becomes difficult to distinguish wheat from chaff. And that's where the citation metrics will come and help you. In addition to the growing number of journal articles, disciplines are diverse. You find social sciences cite more and tend to cite more from chapters and books. And they can't compare between disciplines. Also, the type of documents are different. You'll find that the review articles will cite much more. They tend to be cited much more and much more broadly. And non-substantive articles are usually excluded from any citation metrics denominators. For example, meeting reports and editorials are not counted. Also, it depends upon the age of research cited. So if it's uh, an old article, you'll get a higher number of times it is cited. And if it's a longer career, then there is a higher number of citations or the H index, which is popularly called and used to measure individual authors is uh, higher if you have a person with a longer career. So somebody with an H index of 14 when compared to an H index of four may outright on the face of it appear to be a better individual at 14 or a better at the publication game at 14. However, you might realize that the person who's got a H index of four is very new to the field and probably has first published their first article only in 2016 and has been in the publication game for only four years. Whereas somebody who's had an H index of 14 has been at the publication game since the year 2000 and has been publishing for 20 years. And suddenly you realize that 14 is not better than four actually when looking at it at a greater depth. So there is uh, a lot of sources of data and we will take that up uh, in, in one of the next slides. And so there are so many different citation metrics which are used because each of them is tied to a single database. I'll take it up and make it a little more clearer in one of the next slides. So let's see uh, who are the service providers, who gives the citation metrics, who provides citation metrics, who makes these citation metrics. So there are three service providers that I have listed here. One is the Clarivate Analytics. They recently bought the Thomson Reuters and they have the database, which is the Web of Science, which looks at 13,000 journals. Now, if that was not impressive, we have Scopus. That's a, uh, that's a uh, service run by Elsevier and which looks at 22,000 journals. And then of course we have Google. How could Google left be left behind? We have Google Scholar, which, which provides almost real-time data. So Web of Science uh, provides the impact factors of five-year impact factors, which are published in annual journal citation reports. They give the impact factor, they give the eigenfactor, and they give the immediacy index. We also have uh, Scopus. Scopus gives the SJR. It gives the SNP. SNP is the source normalized impact factor. We will see what is SJR in one of the future slides here. And Google Scholar, it gives Google Scholar metrics. It gives something like the H5 index or the I10 index. 
no, not I10, the car, but yes, I10 index. And it's based on a continually changing data set. So you realize there are three different kinds of service providers, largely. One is linked to the web of science. Elsevier service is linked to the Scopus database and Google Scholar is linked to the Google Scholar or the Google database. So depending upon which database you are linked to, your citation metrics are going to be so different from each other, although you might be looking at the same measurement or the same parameter. So let's look at citation metrics and try and understand what they actually mean. So we have some journal level metrics, we have article level metrics, and we have author level metrics. So let's talk about the journal level metrics first. So as you have all heard of, is the journal impact factors. They measure the average number of citations in the current year to the total number of publications in the journal in the last two years. Usually it's based on a small number of highly cited papers. So the numerator generally is composed of a small number of papers which have been cited again and again and again. It's often misinterpreted as the measure of journal quality or article quality, and it cannot be used to determine the impact of an article. For example, let's say Nature, one of the best journals in um, science and literature has got an impact factor of 38. But when you look at individual articles, you find that most of the articles are cited only 10 to 20 times. Whereas there's a journal PLOS with an impact factor of seven, that's the public library of science. And you'll find there are many articles which are cited zero to five times. So it does not translate really into uh, the article impact or the article impact factor. Now, impact factor or the journal impact factor that we were talking about is given by the Clarivate analytics is linked to the web of science. And it gives the average number of times and articles from the two years time frame is cited in the given particular year and citations are captured, as I said, in the Web of Science database. How do you calculate it? The numerator A is calculated by the number of times an article which is published, let's say in 2017 and 18, were cited in the indexed journals during 2019. So that means for any article, impact factor, you would have to wait through the impact factor. The denominator in this calculation is definitely the total number of research articles which were published in the, in the previous two years. So uh, if we try and put the impact factor in its place, you would realize that social science journals generally have a longer half-life and they measure not two years, but five-year impact factors. And you will find that several high quality journals do not even have an impact factor. So there are several important questions here to address that it's usually a small number of influential articles which gather more and more citations, which will boost up the numerator and skew the averages. A lot of people do a self citation. They keep on citing their own article and this leads to an increased numerator again, which is fallacious and uh, uh, is skewed, is skews the number. So it also uh, does not cover if a journal has recently increased in size and has started publishing more and more papers, then impact factor does not really cover it. And then many review articles which are highly cited, as we said before, would have a greater impact factor, which will push the impact factor higher. So if a journal is publishing only review articles, then it will have a higher impact factor. Whereas if a journal is publishing only research articles, then it might have a lower impact factor. So impact factor, although well talked about and much used, may not be the appropriate metric when you are trying to identify a particular journal. Then they came up with an immediacy index. As we said, an impact factor takes three years to come by. So sometimes you want to get it faster and that's when you get the immediacy index. And they came up with the Eigen score, Eigen factor score. So it's based on a five-year publication framework and it uses weighted citations. 
So it gives more weight to articles which are cited in better journals and less weight to articles which are cited in less important journals. And that's how an eigenfactor score is calculated. So the factors which we were talking about so far were by the Clarivate Analytics linked to the Web of Science database. And as we talked out earlier, there's the Scopus database, which is maintained by Elsevier. And they can come up with a site score, a Schemago journal rank, which is also the SJR, which I was talking about. And it weighs citations according to the rank of citation journal, like the eigenfactor score. And then there is the SNP, the source normalized impact per paper. This was brought up to review or to negate the effect of a particular discipline, like the social sciences articles have a higher chance of being cited and they will push up the impact factors. So SNP weighs and normalizes the data based upon the field or the subject area which is being studied or used. That's we talked about the Schemago journal rank and the SNP. Then there are the Google Scholar matrix and uh, they can be they've used to identify the most heavily cited articles in a specific publication. We'll talk more about the Google citation metrics. So these uh, we were talking about are the journal specific metrics. And let's, let's talk a little bit about the article level metrics also. The article level metrics usually talk about how often the article is cited in other articles, books, or other sources such as the thesis. And again, they often develop, depend upon the discipline, the number of people working in the area, the type of article, and the length of title. So as we said, uh, social sciences have got a higher chance of getting cited. Neurosciences versus mathematics. Let's say there are more neuroscientists than mathematicians, and neuroscientists also publish much more so neuroscientists would cite more. Review articles have a greater chance of getting citations than other case reports. It's also been seen that a shorter title would have more citations, largely because a shorter title would be covering a much broader area, which would be relevant to more number of people. And there is the article influence score. This is just another improvisation of the eigenfactor citation influence. And finally, let's talk a little bit more about the author level metrics. The author level metrics are usually uh, talking about the average citation count per article. And for this, we have the H index, the G index, and the I index. Let's talk a little, more, a little bit more about them. The H index was first given by Hirsch, and it's designed to evaluate individual authors if you um, have the list of papers of an individual author and the number of times each was cited, then you just put them in a, in a descending order of citations. So the article which was cited most goes on top and the article which was cited least goes at the bottom. And then you see where is the intersection. So if the number of papers N or H have been cited at least H times or N times, then that becomes the H index. If the author has four papers, which have been cited at least four times, then the number is four, the H index is four. So even if um, the total number of citations for the first article would be 100, and yet the fourth article would be cited four times, and the fifth article cited only once, then even though the total number of citations of the first article were 100, yet the H index would stay at four because the author has only four papers which were cited four or more times individually. It might be a little more clearer in this graph. So if you have the number of citations on the left, uh, on the y-axis and the number of documents or the number of publications on the x-axis, then the intersection between these two would give the H index of an individual author. Now, uh, since the H index um, negates the total number of citations of the first few papers and comes up with just one number, they came up with a G index, which is the unique largest number such that top G articles receive together at least G square citations. 
So the number of uh, citation metrics that are being developed these days are kind of mind boggling. Google came up with the I-10 index. It says number of papers that have 10 or more citations. And I would finally like to conclude this talk by saying that all metrics of scientific evaluation are bound to be abused as said by Mario Biagioli. And this is based on the good hearts law. It says that when a feature of economy is picked up as an indicator of economy, then it inexorably ceases to function as that indicator because obviously people start to gain it. With that, I come to an end of this presentation.